morning. It's about 7am and I'm in the trusty Asda car park. You know, we did that our last video when we were in Whitby, scoffing oysters and seafood and all that sort of stuff. Well, I'm not very well. I'm feeling lousy. I've got a sick bucket down here. Not been sick yet, but I feel absolutely shocking. Helen's all right. And she says she is. And she keeps uh, pestering me. She keeps mithering me. Oh, come here. I want to look after you. But... I like when when I'm on oh, I can't talk when I'm feeling ill I just want to be on my own I want to be left alone so I'm going to attempt to have some toast or something in a banana and just get back on the road Live in the dream. Dun, dun, dun. Oh, they're all a bit there. Uh, get two. Ch -ch -ch. Yeah, what am I going to have? So I've just gone for a banana and a sourdough bagel. I was going to have toast, but I can't be bothered. <clears throat> just dry food. I know bananas are good for you when you've been pulled out. And then I'll just clean rubbish out at car. Let me eat this first. I've got a coffee as well. I was just cleaning rubbish out at car and when we were driving back from uh, Whitby we were reminiscing about popping candy what you used to have when you were you know that stuff that popped in your mouth when you were a kid and I went in a petrol station and the surprise surprise they had some so I bought some of this popping candy and I'd just picked out because I was feeling hung over and then I had a load of popping candy it's probably not best mix that is it that's probably why I'm feeling a bit meh today <clears throat> So I'll let that be a lesson to you. Uh, back on the healthy food this week now. The most common question that's come up is about uh, financials and how much am I saving since I moved in my van full time. Now, obviously everybody's gonna be different. Uh, my outgoings, they probably were not that high compared to a lot of people, but I was, I'm probably saving just over 1100 pound a month since moving into my van. <clears throat> Some of my, they're just things that are like my rent, my gas, electricity, my council tax, my water rates, they've just all vanished completely. There's things that I'm spending more money on uh, due to van life, and that is fuel. I'm spending a little bit more on fuel. I don't need to, but I think I'll probably get better at that. But I don't know, I'm just flitting around a lot. And at, at the beginning, I was paranoid trying to find a decent spot. Uh, so we're driving miles to find a spot when it's really not rocket science. So I think that's going to come down a bit. I spend on a laundrette on average once a week, and that usually works out at about £15 a week. I have what they call a service wash. I use a place in Barnsley. I drop a big bag of clothes off, they wash them, they dry them, and they're all folded up, ready to pick up the next day. I can't be bothered sitting there reading Woman's Own while my, my clothes are going, getting washed. I think that's it, really. Food shopping. Weirdly, I, I think I'm spending less on food. I don't know why. That's probably a personal thing, because I'm trying to get back onto the healthy, healthy thing. But... I've seen a lot of van lifers and it's strange because they all have these spice racks and they all have this massive kitchen area and it's just stocked up with mums with the food and I was going to do that and I started doing it and it's just pointless.
because there's always to me it is anyway because there's always places nearby i just i go to asda probably every day probably sometimes i go twice a day and you just get something like this morning i just went in and got a like a bagel and some bananas and then if i want a sandwich later on i'll call and get a sandwich i think a lot of people you buy stuff when you're, you're in, in a home and it ends up in freezer and you know, a lot of stuff gets chucked away. You, you learn to be really frugal with your food, I think, because you just buy it and you eat it and that's it. I'm mixing it up with a bit of Tesco's now. Living on the edge, getting a bit bored of Asda. So I'm, uh, I'm just going to nip in here to get something for my tea. And then I'll probably have my tea in back at van. In Tesco's car park, before finding a spot. Anyway, the next question is, what's your biggest bugbear? Uh, I'll tell you what it is. Everything takes so bloody long. It's... I don't, when you're in back at van and you're getting... Can you imagine getting washed, especially in a tiny space like that? You've got to like know where everything is. Everything's got to have a place. And you've got to get them out one at a time, get the things out and put them in. Same when you're cooking. So it's easy to get lazy and just think, oh, I'll cook something dead easy. I'll not cook anything at all, just get a sandwich. So yeah, it just takes forever. And you're trying to keep the place tidy all the time, making your bed, taking your bed down again, all that. Uh, and then my other bugbear, which leads on to me, sec uh, the next question, the third question that I got, is the size of my van. Uh, people saying, would you be better with a bigger van? Absolutely. 100%, yeah. And my situation is, I already had this van uh, for my business. And uh, so I just thought, well, I'll try van life out in that. But I'm saving like crazy to get a bigger van. It's 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 a real hindrance with a small van. You, you're forever like, you can't even sit up straight. So I'm forever sort of cocked over. Uh yeah, if, you, if you're thinking of doing this, just get as big, well, not as big van as possible, but get a, a high roof. You, you want to be able to stand up. Anyway, I'm off into Tesco to live the dream. Yeah, you see, it's, it's quite difficult to sit completely upright, so I'm always cocked over a little bit. I've got a stool, and I can sit down there, but... I can't really do that on film. Uh, anyway, I've got some tea. I'm still not 100%. So I've got a chicken soup. And a bread roll. I'm just going to cook this now. It smells absolutely gorgeous. So while that's cooking, uh, I'll go on to the next question, which was, how much did your van cost to build? Right, well, not including the cost of the van, I bought the van for, I think it was six and a half thousand. And it's a difficult one to answer about the cost of the build, because it probably cost me a lot more than what uh, it, it should do, because I was completely bodging it. And I weren't keeping a record because I didn't plan on sort of doing YouTube or anything like that. So I've got my lining. That were a couple hundred quid. My floor. Oh, there's the insulation. My flooring. My bit of wood. My cabinet. Which I, I nicked a cabinet out of my house and sort of cut it up. Electrics, battery. I'll, what I'll do is I'll try and do a proper breakdown. It's going to take me a while. I'll need to do it and put it on my website. But probably a couple of grand it cost me. I know. You do it a lot cheaper. As I said, the thing is... When I was doing mine, I kept getting things wrong and like wasting money and having to start again and all that stuff, so. That don't look too appetising, does it? But it's a start. On the road to getting better. And I'm going to watch for the 50 millionth time 
the best film ever made. Or one of them. So, catch you in a bit. Well, I, I ate... Sorry again. Well, I ate half of that. I did the best I could. But my stomach's still a little bit gripey. So... The next question is... How do I find places to park for the night? Good question. I don't know. I just wing it. But I'm going to try and find somewhere now. What I do is... I found a few places and I've got like a, a list of places where I park and obviously I don't want to reveal them all and I sort of rotate it because I don't want to be in the same place all the time another really good tip is so you go to your supermarket car parks and you can spend the evening in your van there then get even get ready and everything chill out and then when it's time to sleep then you go and find somewhere and then you just park up very stealthy, you're in the back of the van and you're asleep. I mean, certain areas you don't have to do that, but that's if you're park, parking sort of urban on the street. So what we'll do, we'll have a drive around. I'll just go somewhere totally random and uh, we'll see if we can find somewhere. Downside about these spots, that spot, is they're on slopes. I know that road up on right will be somewhere up there, but we'll go down. Now, just out of curiosity, if you go on the app park for night, there's a car park down here and you're allowed to park over. Let's go and have a look at that, see if anybody's about. There's all cars with windows steamed up. I wonder what they're up to. Church on one side, and we've got like an industrial thing on the other side. Best space for buses to get in. I'm failing that. That feels good. I've just pulled round corner, so the same church, but there's just a just off main road. So it's an even a little bit quieter. like now the paranoia starts a little bit I start thinking oh is it too quiet here you know what if some car thieves drive past and they think oh it's a really quiet road can nick that van but they're more likely to do that in that car park aren't they Washing my pots, my wet wipe and tissue. <coughs> I 
I've just been woke up by one of them uh, cars with bloody stupid exhausts on. It's like just getting up at 5am. And I fell asleep in my clothes. Which is not like me. But I guess I was a little bit wary of this spot. But it's been alright. It's been fine. Apart from that car waking me up. Uh, next question, have I had any scary experiences? Simple answer, no. I'm, uh, I'm, but I'm only three weeks in. Nothing, nothing scary at all, really. Just trying to think, what's? I've had a couple of moments where sort of vehicles have pulled up behind me in the middle of the night, and you can hear the engines ticking over. But you think, oh, what's going on? Are they going to come and tow me away or something? But it's probably just delivery vans and stuff like that. But nothing. I've not had anybody knocking knocking on my van. They're out like that. It's funny. I'm going to be a bit controversial here. You watch all these van life videos. And I just, I just seem to be a little bit suspicious of some of them. Because they all seem to be having knocks on the doors in the middle of the night. It was just happened to have cameras ready as well. I don't know, but if somebody knocks on my door in the middle of the night, on my window, I'm not picking my camera up. But, I guess, I don't know. Some might be genuine, I'm sure they are. There's this fear, I'm going to do another video on this, about the anxiety, there's this fear about people coming up and banging on your van or whatever, because they know, it. who's going to do that, do you do, do, you do that, Does there, do, do normal people do that, when you're just walking down the street you see a van, you think, oh, I wonder if somebody's sleeping in that, or bang on it, I know there's thieves and stuff, but I don't think there's people going around telling you to move on. And they can't anyway, if you're on the street, people can't tell you to move on. This next one ties in. Can I recommend any good or free, good free places for people who are wanting to test out sleeping in the van? For complete beginners. Uh, I'll tell you what I did. The very first time I slept in my van, it were on my drive. I was just keen to test it out. So that's a possibility, maybe. If you haven't got a drive, do it on the street in front of your house because you're going to know that street quite well. Once you've got over the paranoia about the possibility of your neighbours seeing you getting out of on at six o'clock. Another option, although it's not free, but they tend to, it tends to feel a lot more relaxed, is. There's a Facebook page, I can't remember the name of it, but if you search, if you go to Facebook and you search UK van stopovers or something like that, UK camper van stopovers, there's a Facebook page and you can search for your area and there's quite a few pubs now uh, which are doing this to sort of generate extra income. So if you have a meal in the pub, they'll let you stay in there in the car park overnight and then you'll see like when we went to Whitby that's what we did and we do quite a bit of that now it just feels it tends to be quieter after everybody's gone home and it just feels a bit safer but technically it's not free because you've got to have a meal well what I'd suggest is just bite the bullet and go for it you're gonna be scared your first night but when you wake up, you'll think, well, what were all that about? Why were I scared? I'm absolutely humming. <laughs> so I'm just going to go to the uh, the gym and get a shower. Straighten you up there. Uh, which ties me into one of the questions, because a, a lot of people are aware that I've got a unit, a uh, business unit. So people are saying, why don't you have a shower? Why don't you put a shower in your unit? Or why don't you put a kitchen? I can't do that, it's just not practical. It's a tiny unit and I'll store all my stuff in there for my business. Every little antiques business. 
very little antiques business. I just dabble, wheel and deal. But I store all my stuff there. If I were going to put a, a shower, I'd need to don't need proper plumbing and everything. So, I mean, there's toilets. It's like a, a shared toilet. And there's a tiny sink. But I've got this this place just around the corner, this gym. Really nice showers and a so on. And besides, when I go here, I always sort of uh, am more motivated to have a bit of a workout as well. Just don't feel the need to have a, a shower in my unit. I might try and sneak it in. Did you enjoy that? That's for my OnlyFans page, that. Remember, I forgot my name, Fat Bald Barnsley Bloat. <laughs> it's not real, by the way. People that commented on that last time, it's not a real thing. Uh, yeah, I always feel better after a good shower. I appreciate it more that I'm not having them as often. <laughs> You know, parts outside gym. I wonder if some scientists could do like a study into the correlation of steroid usage, neck tattoos, and having to park in disabled bays. I don't know if that's a disability. I don't know if a neck tattoo is classed as a disability, but they're all in disabled bays. I've got nothing against tattoos, I've got some myself. And if people want to take steroids, that's each to their own. I've got no issue with that either. But parking in disabled bays, you're in a gym. It's really one of my bugbears, this. There's, like, there's lots of pogs about 20 foot away. Park in one of them. You don't need to be directly outside the door. What's all that about? You can't walk 20 foot. Anyway... Uh, another question internet it just said internet question mark and i assume that means what do i do for internet well i just use my phone i just use i'm with smarty and i pay 10 pound a month and i get they've got an offer on you get 30 gigs of data but they're doubling it at the moment you get 60 gigs or at least i think they are but i've never run out and i tether my laptop i tether my tablet i'm on computer a lot i use a lot of internet I've never had an issue, well, I tell a lie, I've had an issue once on one park up. It was a few videos back, I had no internet on that, but it's not a big deal. I guess if you're going to be travelling around the highlands and islands and all the stuff like that, and maybe Europe, you might want to look at a dedicated uh, thing, where you get like a thing on top of your van. I watched some of the Canadian van lifers. Oh, there's another one pulling in. Yeah, let's have a look. See if she's got a badge. Do you know what? I think she's got face tattoos. Should I film them? I think that'd be better. Oh, she's covered in tattoos. <laughs> oh my god! Absolute. Oh no. Entire face covered in tattoos. In disabled bear. There's all pogs outside of me here. I'm, I'm like, I'm not even 20 foot. 15 foot away. Why not park in one of these? That is so funny. I couldn't film her. Anyway, but absolute covered in tattoos. So... Internet, yeah. There's lots of videos on YouTube. Have a look at them. But for me, I'm just using Smarty. And they're all right. Off to a laundry now. Yeah, it's 30 miles an hour on this road. Can you believe it? Is that you told me to slow down? No, it's ridiculous. There is a speed camera up here. You think that this sort of dual carriageway thing was thought? Anyway, question. 
it's going to be heavily edited this because she's just like expletives she's just rough <laughs> as uh, potty mouth, potty mouth <laughs> rabbiting on so let's keep telling it telling everybody all our secrets yeah don't just keep it just keep it pg she's not yeah keep it pg she's not media trained like i am <laughs> right, the question is, let's try it again. How did we meet? We met on a very famous dating site. We did. That you don't have to pay for. That you have to swipe on. And I swiped right and that was the best decision I've ever made. Me too. Even though I did catfish you in old photograph, didn't I? Well, it was you, but you, you sort of lied a little bit. But lie. people always do that, don't they? they put you're, on you're putting your best that, picture. I'm going straight what, like, on now. It's how we know. Ben. You've got to tell me where to go. I, I'm not a brain reader. A mind reader. Brain reader. <laughs> not a mind reader. A brain reader. Yeah, I keep, just keep just saying. But yeah. Like, so, but that picture, and I thought, oh, wow. Look That's at that amazing. man about town. And do you know when we were talking, like when you start messaging each other yeah so and do you know he's what? a comedy genius that was it you put that you're an antiques dealer yeah. on your thing i think i messaged you first yeah, because you i said have you got a tan like david dickens, david dickens? <laughs> <laughs> yeah it's <laughs> ironic <laughs> it's that way do you think so you thought oh yeah she's a bit special yeah i did think you were special yeah. And then when I met her on the first day, I walked into the pub and it was like, she come in and she lights her room up when she walks in. And I fell in love. Oh. <laughs> I'm only saying it for telly. <laughs> telly <laughs> box. For, for telly box. I fell in love. Did you? I did straight away, but you, you weren't that sure about me. At well, I'd been on that many dates and I was a bit jaded by it all. So the barriers were up. But I tell you what, the second day, mm. yes. I really turned charm on. It, you Are we going to tell them where we went on a third day? <laughs> she, there's, a, there's a place called, what's it called? Company store. Yeah, the it's, company shop. The company shop, and it's and basically... And you have to like, work for I mean, a certain it, uh, like line of work yeah. to get a card for it. And you get, you get a discount on like, Close to sell by, like all things. And I've, I've always wanted to. M &S. Go. <laughs> she said she were going, so we went on a date, didn't we? Yeah, to a cheap to shop. The company store. Company it's shop. like going to Aldi for a date. Yeah, I bet you were really impressed. I was impressed. So not only am, am I just amazing, but I'm also a bit thrifty, also. She's a thrifty girl, aren't you? Yeah. Yeah, because on the second day we went to that hotel. And I complained Legit. about... And you were moaning about the price of the beer, I was complaining beer, about price of beer. Nick but like, it didn't like, matter because you got that tight black t-shirt on. Yeah, I put my pulling t-shirt And you, you were a bit more buff then. What are you saying, like? <laughs> oh, when you get up, up here... here and then rise, yeah. Yeah. No, I mean, we both sort of uh, ex put a bit of weight on them. In the lockdown. It's because we're uh, happy and yeah, settled. Yeah, we are. We need to get back into exercise, don't we? Yeah, I am. Do you know, do you know that weekend with Scott is going to kill us? Yeah. Up, that, up those mountains. Next question was, has van life brought us close, were it closer together or something? Has it made our relationship stronger or whatever? Our relationship just keeps getting stronger and stronger and stronger every day. Well, it's always been strong. So we've it's been, been very been strong. A lot together. We have, we? yeah. And I love you so much. It's always been strong, hasn't it? Yeah. It has, darling. Yeah. Every day, I love you a little bit more. <laughs> I do. I know that's like vomit worthy, but I do. Yeah. Same here. I'm you are. You, soon, you're right? sort of the grumpy female version of me. I'm the female version of you. Yeah. Grumpy I mean, male the, version. Sorry, yeah, that's what I meant. And then the next. Another question. What do I miss most about living in a house? Uh, at this moment in time, I can only think of one thing, and that's having a nice bath. I do like a bath. 
uh, that's probably it. But still Neil was, you know, three weeks in, so that'll probably change the big things that come into my head. And, but at this moment in time, nothing other than having a bath. Uh, another question. What's my sort of, I, I mean I can't remember the exact, because I've not got them written down, but it was about the power usage, what sort of power do I use? Uh, for cooking and stuff in the van. Now, I've got one 115 amp hour uh, battery, leisure battery, which I got from Alpha Batteries, which uh, it was probably, I can't remember, it was about 115 pound. It's charged up by a, uh, a split charge relay thing, so when I'm driving, it's getting charged up. All I run off that is my lights. I use it to charge up tablets, uh, phones. I run a little tube heater and a heated mat, sort of what I have on my bed. Uh, they plug into a 300 watt inverter, which I bought, a really cheap one that I bought off Amazon. Never had any issues with power yet, but I am a small van. For cooking, I just use uh, one of the gas stoves and just do basic cooking as you've probably seen. Normally just a pizza or something like that. But you know, I can I can do other stuff in it like chicken and rice and stuff like that. So I think that's about it really. There's some other little questions or sort of other versions of the bigger questions. So what what I'm gonna do is I'll put an article on my website. It's uh, www.bythecurve.co.uk. It's just a blog, it's only a basic thing. But I'll answer all the questions on there and I can keep adding to that. So I'll have a look on there. Uh, thanks for watching. I know this has been a bit of a long one, but I'll add chapters so you can navigate to any particular question. It might, might some people might see this one as a bit boring, seeing as on most of his videos we're out sort of sightseeing and boozing and stuff like that. But as I said, I've had so many questions, I just wanted to get them all answered. I'm just going to Halfords now to get some rust treatment because there's a few spots of rust on the van which I want to treat. So I want to sort that out. Probably bodge that up as well. Probably make it worse. Anyway, oh, something else I've got to tell you about. Local paper contacted me. What Barnsley Chronicle. Uh, she'd see me on YouTube. The sun's bright. And she wanted to write a bit about me in paper that comes out tomorrow it might be a hit piece and I th at first I thought oh I don't want it I don't want that but then I thought well what, what have I got to lose what's worse that'll happen and could something positive come out of it well yeah it could you know if it's people that were in my situation if it's going to motivate them and give them uh, you know a bit of uh, help then that's all good isn't it anyway thanks for watching uh, I'll see you in the next video. Adios.